The sky is falling for investors and the stock market just had its worst three days of the year. A recession warning signal with a perfect track record just flashed red, but most investors are nowhere near prepared for what's to come. In this video, I'll show you why a 2020 recession is more likely than most investors realize and, and what you need to do to get ready for that next stock market crash. We're talking investing before a crash today on Let's Talk Money. Be make money, make your money work for creating you. the financial future you deserve. Let's talk money. Joseph Hogue with the Let's Talk Money channel here on YouTube. I want to send a special shout out to everyone in the community. Thank you for taking a part of your day to be here. If you're not part of that community yet, just click that little red subscribe button. It's free and you'll never miss an episode. The sky is falling for the market. It seems every time you turn on the TV, the worst three days of the year for the S&P 500 have all been in August and seven of the worst 10 days have been since May. In fact, the market has gone from a roaring 21% gain on the year to a daily roller coaster that would make seven flags jealous. Economists are currently putting the chance of a recession in the next year at 35%. But then again, economists have a lousy track record of predicting recessions. Research by Fathom Consulting found that of the 469 recessions since 1988, the International Monetary Fund has been able to predict only four of them by the spring of the preceding year. Worse still for investors, the IMF has never forecast a recession in a developed country with a lead of more than a few months. You know, private sector economists aren't much better either. Another study by Zedong and Lugani found that private sector economists have only correctly forecast five of the last 153 recessions in 63 countries from 1992 to 2014. So if you're waiting on the economic models to tell you if a recession is coming in 2020, good luck with that. And that's from a guy that worked as an economist. But there are some very strong warning signs pointing to an eventual recession and the coming stock market crash. So what I want to do with this video is start by listing some of the reasons that we could see a 2020 recession, what you can do to prepare and how to invest before that recession. Now, 10 years outside of recession, I know it can sound like a pointless economic term, uh, something only academics really worry about. But just take a little time to remember that last 2008 recession. We all remember the 50% drop in stocks, but don't forget that 2.6 million people also lost their jobs. Tens of thousands of people ready to retire saw their nest eggs wiped out, and the National Institute of Health found nearly 10,000 cases of suicide tied to that crisis, with thousands in the U.S. alone. This is serious, and one of the most powerful recession signs just went off this summer. The interest rate on the two-year government treasury bond has been higher than the rate on the 10-year government bond several times already this summer. A normal is for the longer term bond to yield a higher interest rate. So investors should want a higher rate for locking up their money for that 10 years instead of just two. Now why this is important is because that yield curve inversion, as it's called, has been signaling, has signaled every recession in the last 50 years. You know, while a lot of other recession warning signs might flash off and on, but without a great record for actually predicting a recession, this one has a perfect record every single time. A recession has followed the inverted yield curve by an average of 22 months, which would put the start of a recession right around mid-2021. That's just the average though, and there have been three recessions in the last 50 years that started much sooner after that inverted curve. You know, looking at the stock market now, which usually dips well before an actual recession hits. For example, the stock market started falling in July 2007, a year before unemployment really started getting bad in 2008. And here we see a scarier picture for 2020. In three of the five recessions since 1980, stocks started falling from their peak almost a year before the recession started. That means we could see stocks start getting slammed mid-2020 or even earlier. Now there are other warning signs to the coming recession, but the real risk here is that this all becomes something like a self-fulfilling prophecy. The market is reacting to that inverted yield curve, selling off like a recession is coming. Uh, companies see the stock market falling and start to rethink their hiring plans for the rest of the year. Now that just causes unemployment to start rising, which decreases consumer spending and pretty soon we're deep in a recession. For those of you dedicated enough to sit through that econo speak there, and you know I never like just going straight into what to do without explaining why first, let's look at how you can prepare ahead of that stock market crash. And here I want to cover a few ideas, not only to prepare you financially, but, but also to invest ahead of the recession. First, it's time to look at your income and expenses and take an honest look at the possibility of not being able to cover your bills. The unemployment rate hit 10% in 2009 with over 15 million people out of work. Worse still though was the fact that the average time unemployed reached 40 weeks, three years unemployed for many people and more than twice the average we've ever seen before. 
So I want you to attack this from both sides, your income and your expenses. You know, maybe this isn't the time to buy that shiny new car or, or be taking on new bills, but it is the time to start looking for ways to make a little extra cash. Now, whether that means putting in a few extra hours at work or just starting that work from home hustle on five or 10 hours a week, this is gonna give you that extra cushion to survive anything a new recession brings. Now, investing before a stock market crash or a recession doesn't mean you have to be timing the market perfectly. After more than a decade of higher stock prices, now is the perfect time to rebalance your portfolio, to, to take some of the risk off stocks and get protection in those other assets. Now, what I mean by rebalancing is just looking at the amount of money you have in stocks, bonds, and real estate compared to, compared to that total portfolio. For example, if you have a total portfolio of 50,000 with 45,000 in stocks and 5,000 in bonds, then you have 90% of your money in stocks and just 10% in bonds. And of course, subsequently, nothing in real estate. Of course, the reason why this is so important is because having too much in stocks just before that recession or the market crash, obviously not a good thing. You know, millions of 50 something investors had almost everything in stocks when the market crashed in 2008, losing half of their retirement savings. You know, having money spread more evenly between stocks, bonds, and real estate is going to protect you from the worst of the coming crash. You'll see your stock portfolio fall a little bit, but, but your overall portfolio value is going to be protected with those other two investment types. So here you're going to add up all your investments in stocks, bonds, and real estate. You know, that means adding up all the individual stocks and stock funds, adding up the bond funds, and adding up any investment in REITs, that's real estate investment trusts, as well as direct property investments. And then you take each of these three numbers and just divide by the total to give you a percentage of, of what you have in each individual asset. Again, if you have that 50,000 total invested with 30,000 in stocks, 15,000 in bonds, and 5,000 in real estate investment trusts, then you've got 30 grand divided by 50 or 60% in stocks. You'd have 30% in bonds and 10% in real estate. And that's actually not too bad a percentage split, though I'd have more, maybe a little bit more in real estate and less in bonds. And now your target percentages that you want are going to be depend on your age and your tolerance for risk. But I can almost guarantee you nine in 10 people watching this video are going to have more than 80% of their money in stocks. And that's way too much if you're looking down the barrel of a recession. Another strategy to use before the coming recession might be to reposition into sectors that aren't as expensive as the overall market. Now the chart here shows the forward price to earnings ratio of each sector in the economy. That's the price of the stocks in that sector divided by the combined earnings analysts think that the companies can, are going to report over the next year. You see here that the S&P 500 market index is trading at about a price to, of 16.2 times expected earnings of the companies in the index. That's a premium of almost 13% over that 10 year average of 14.8 times forward earnings. Now, some of the individual sectors are even more expensive with stocks and information technology trading at a 29% premium above their 10 year average. But there are pockets of value still in the market, so with stocks of financial companies and energy companies trading below that long-term valuation. Now, this isn't to say that all financial or energy companies are good investments, but there certainly does seem to be more value opportunities compared to those, those more expensive sectors. Now, you can take this information and invest broadly across those value sectors, investing in funds like the, the Financial Select Sector Fund or, or, or look for best-of-breed companies within these sectors. Now you can also rebalance your portfolio to some of the traditionally safe sectors and into cash before that recession. Research by Fidelity in this graphic shows the average returns by sector during a recession, as well as how often those sectors produced a positive return. Now you see that the 11 sectors studied, five have produced positive returns during a recession, with three of those sectors, so consumer staples, utilities, and healthcare, all generating positive returns in 70% or more of the recession study. And compare that against sectors like technology, which we already know is expensive on a PE basis that have averaged a negative 8% return during recessions. So this strategy might still be a little bit more market timing than a lot of you want. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. The vast majority of investors would do very well with just to invest in a diversified portfolio, make regular deposits and take a stress-free approach. No, I'm talking about just investing in a handful of funds and stocks, not trying to change your investments into different sectors, but just hanging on for the long run. You still do need to watch that amount that you have in uh, stocks, bonds, and real estate though. So after more than 10 years of a bull market, most investors have way more in stocks than, than what would be safe. For example, if you had a 50-50 portfolio of stocks and bonds in March 2009, you would now have over 75% of that portfolio invested in stocks. 
And stocks have returned an annualized 17% return, while bonds have lagged with that 4% return over the period. So having more money in stocks over the last 10 years has certainly paid off, but, but now it leaves you hugely exposed to that stock market crash. If we get another crash like the 2009 disaster and stocks lose half their value, your nest egg is gonna fall off a cliff. So even if you don't wanna use some of those strategies here, so repositioning in different stock sectors, please, you still need to rebalance back to your target percentages in stocks, bonds, and real estate. Click on the video to the right here for the truth about how to invest in stocks. I'm revealing the three lies Wall Street tells investors, three lies I saw firsthand working as an equity analyst. Don't forget to join the Let's Talk Money community by tapping that subscribe button and clicking the bell notification.